Throughout history, humanity has faced devastating diseases that have threatened lives and communities. But the story of vaccines is one of triumph over these formidable fools showcasing the resilience of scientific innovation and human ingenuity. Have you ever pondered about the incredible power of a vaccine shot? How this tiny vial of fluid, invisible to the naked eye, can guard against deadly diseases? Today, we delve into the world of vaccines, exploring their varieties and focusing on one in particular, the malaria vaccine. A vaccine is any biological product used to stimulate immunity to a particular infectious disease or pathogen, typically prepared from inactivated or a weakened form of the causative agent or its product or constituent. A vaccine's purpose is simple yet profound. To train our immune system to recognize and fight against harmful pathogens. But not all vaccines are created equal. They come in different forms, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. On one hand, we have live attenuated vaccines. They contain a version of the live virus that has been weakened in a laboratory. Measles, mumps, and rubella vaccines all fall under this category. The advantage lies in the ability to stimulate a strong and often lifelong immune response. However, they are not suitable for everyone. People with weakened immune systems, for instance, may not be able to handle them. On the other hand, inactivated vaccines use killed version of the germ that causes a disease. Polio, hepatitis A vaccines all fall under this category. While they are faster, especially for those with compromised immune system, they usually require multiple doses over time to maintain immunity. Then, there are subunit, recombinant, and conjugate vaccines. These use specific pieces of the germ, like its protein, to stimulate an immune response. The hepatitis A and HPV vaccines are examples. They offer a strong targeted response with fewer side effects, but like inactivated vaccines, may require booster shots. Finally, we have mRNA vaccines, a new type of vaccine used in the fight against COVID-19. They teach our cells how to make the protein to trigger an immune response. They don't contain the live virus, hence can't give you the disease. They are often faster and cheaper to produce, but their long-term effectiveness still remains to be seen. Have you ever wondered why it took us so long to develop a vaccine against malaria, one of the world's deadliest diseases? The answer lies in the complex nature of the disease and the journey to find a viable vaccine that has been long and challenging. Let's discuss the malaria vaccine its origin, life cycle, and clinical trials and the results that have been generated thus far. Malaria is a serious and life-threatening disease that is caused by the plasmodium parasite, and it is transmitted through bites of infected mosquitoes. According to the World Health Organization, in 2019, there were an estimated 229 million cases of malaria worldwide, with Africa bearing the greatest burden. It is a global health concern and the development of a vaccine has been a long-awaited solution. So, let's delve in and learn more about this vaccine. To understand the malaria vaccine, let me summarize the life cycle of the parasite. When a mosquito bites you, it injects sporozoids into your bloodstream, which is a form of the malaria parasite. These sporozoids migrate to your liver and they infect your liver and begin to multiply and mature into merozoids. Merozoids then leave the liver into your bloodstream to infect red blood cells, destroy them and continue to multiply and develop into gametocytes, waiting for a mosquito to suck your blood and continue the life cycle of the parasite. If we can block sporozoids from reaching the liver in the first place, then the rest of the cycle becomes incomplete. Without any intervention, our immune system tries to stop the sporozoids from reaching the liver. However, parasites develop trees and hide from the immune system. And this is where scientists come in. 
to understand these dynamics between parasite and our immune system and to help train our immune system to easily recognize these parasites and launch an attack to destroy them even before they reach your liver. If you're new to this channel, please pause the video, subscribe, like, and hit that notification bell to stay informed. Health is wealth and information is key to long life and prosperity. In the mid-80s, the first significant outbreak in the field of malaria research occurred. Scientists discovered a protein on the surface of the parasite called the circumsporozoid protein, CSP. This discovery paved the way for the development of RTSS vaccine, which is specifically targeted against this protein. The idea of a vaccine is to train our immune system to recognize this protein present on the surface of the sporozoid and launch an attack against it. The first clinical trial for the RTSS vaccine began in the early 90s. Initial trials showed promising results, but the vaccine's effectiveness was still far from ideal. Over the next 20 to 30 years, researchers continued to refine and improve these vaccines through numerous rounds of clinical trials and modifications. In the early 2010s, large-scale phase 3 clinical trials took place across several African countries involving over 15,000 infants and young children. The results were encouraging. The RTSS vaccine reduced malaria cases by about 25 to 35% in children who received four doses of this vaccine. However, the journey didn't stop there. The World Health Organization launched a pilot implementation program in 2019, aiming to reach hundreds of thousands of children in Ghana, Kenya, and Malawi. This real-world vaccine test was crucial to understand how the vaccine could work in the context of routine immunization. Preliminary results showed that Hospitalizations from severe malaria cases reduced by about 30%. Is this enough? Considering the magnitude of infections and the disease burden, 30% reduction in hospitalization is a great step forward. Although a lot of improvement has to be done on this vaccine. Now fast forward to the present day. The RTSS vaccine has been endorsed by the World Health Organization, marking a significant milestone in the fight against malaria. However, it is important to remember that this vaccine is not a silver bullet. It is a tool, a very important one, in our broader strategy to control and eventually eliminate malaria. In 2021, researchers at the University of Oxford demonstrated that an updated and modified version of the vaccine conferred immunity against the disease to over 75% of participants. Initial trials showed promising results, but the vaccine's effectiveness was still far from acceptable until recently. Over the past two decades, researchers continued to refine and improve this vaccine through numerous rounds of trials and modifications. So, what have you learned about this journey? The development of the malaria vaccine has been a testament to the power of persistence and scientific ingenuity. It has shown us that even the most complex and challenging disease can be tackled with time, research, and commitment. The RTSS vaccine is not perfect, I would say, but it is a crucial step forward. It has the potential to save hundreds of thousands of lives every year particularly in Sub-Saharan Africa where malaria hits hardest. As we continue to refine and improve this vaccine, we also need to ramp up our efforts in other areas like mosquito control, rapid diagnostics, and effective treatment. In summary, the development of the malaria vaccine has been long, but it was worth it. The RTS vaccine is the first of its kind and it's a very powerful tool in our fight against malaria. Its development has been a monumental scientific achievement and its implementation could mark the turning point in our battle against deadly diseases. Thank you for watching. Until we meet again, this is Street Science by Dr. Kum. One story, one street at a time.